Hey everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you're watching and welcome to the third episode of Web3 and Chill. So it's me, Ayush, and with me as usual, I have Vishal and today our guest, our very interesting guest with a very great career history is Ken. Um, it's very difficult for me to introduce Ken. Uh, while we were researching about him, I went to his LinkedIn and his LinkedIn was 2000 to 2010, I did this. 2016 to 18, I did this. 2020 to 21, I'm doing this. So it's very difficult for me to introduce him. So Ken, what are you? Who are you? How would you like <laughs> to describe yourself? If, first, thanks for letting me uh, you know, be on the show. It's awesome. Uh, I am a artist and technologist and advisor consultant. Uh, I'm using my last 20 years of experience, both in art and technology to uh, help other artists, but I'm, I'm looking to advance the field, uh, art in general, in the Web3 space or in the new metaverses, uh, the metaverse space. So, uh, you know, if I were, if, that's just what I am. I'm an artist um, and I'm, I'm using all of the experiences that I've had to uh, make new things, you know, uh, merge the technology and art. Okay. So when we say merging technology, art and Web3, people usually think of fancy NFTs. Is that uh, something that you're doing or, is, you know, well, what I, are you doing I, in the Web3 world? Yeah, no, I, I so I'm, we have client work. Uh, the Artist Collective is the is the company I started last year. And okay. we have client work where we're bringing traditional artists into the Web3 space. Uh, some of them have no digital knowledge, let alone Web3 knowledge. So uh, it's been a year of taking traditional artists, teaching them, you know, we digitize their uh, their artworks, we whether it's a 2D artwork or 3D artwork, we digitize them and we them all the channels that now we can sell, the marketplaces that they can use, the different technologies they can use to, uh, uh, you know, promote themselves and stuff. So it's that's been the most interesting journey is watching the artists get revitalized because a lot of the people that I work with are, you know, in their 50s, 60s, sometimes oh, wow. 70s. Wow. And, and they just, they're so excited with the, the way that now they can get right up close to the customer, the client, the, you know, the fan, um, and Web3 is enabling this ownership, you know, and this, uh, this independence and that, you know, people are, people are able to give their money or, you know, buy, invest in the artist, not just buy a piece of art. I think that's what I'm saying. Um, and as far as like what we're doing in merging art and technology in Web3, personally, my interests are uh, like what would be blockchain art, right? Like how do you get something interesting that's actually recorded onto the blockchain or use the blockchain with other things in order to create an art piece that's relevant to the blockchain. Uh, right now, we use NFTs more or less as a receipt, right? It's a, it's a ticket and a receipt. Uh, the yeah the items that are linked with that receipt uh that's what's recorded on the blockchain and you're able to get the provenance you're able to record uh you know facts about the you know uh, about the artworks and traits and things like that but that that's not art that's just a technology you know a technology factor um so what i what i find most interesting is people that are using the ai and the blockchain in in a in a new way to advance art and technology Got it. So I have a follow-up question. Uh, I want to know the story, like from where it started uh, of you as an artist before you was a Web3 expert or anything. You, you as an artist, how, how that started and how did you decided, okay, I want to merge Web3, my knowledge or curiosity of Web3 with art, something that I love. I want to know more about that. Yeah. So my first, <laughs> my, my first computer class was like 1984, 1985, and it wow. was basic. It was basic programming, like it was it was a uh, uh, drawing in basic, right? The the programming language. So uh, the ancient computers, the ancient printers. Um, but ever since then, I've always felt that the computer is just an extension of the artist. It's just another tool. I just like from mm -hmm. the very young age. So um, I'm not, you know, uh, 
20 years ago, I had just gotten out of the military or spent some time out of the military, uh, was doing construction and stuff, but I've always been an artist and I went to university for art. I just knuckled down and during that time I was running my own web development company, uh, worked my way through university with my own company and stuff. Eventually I moved into enterprise at, at Tulane University. I was working alongside people that were building supercomputers. Like I'm not, I'm not a programmer. I'm not a, you know, I'm not like a real hot, like deep, deep techie. I can code, I can understand things, mm -hmm. but uh, I was working around the real scientists and the people building like these amazing things that mm -hmm. give me a perspective today that's different than most people. Cause I saw a lot of this, literally the AI, I saw a lot of it 10 years ago when it was, you know, it was nothing, you know, it was just people's yeah. concepts. And uh, eventually I, I, I got an offer to work uh, move into the corporate world and started building web uh, web applications and, and cloud applications. Got real technical into that, and for about ten years, I just kind of stopped doing art altogether. Um, after after last year or say the fall of 2021, I had spent about a year learning Web3 and uh, you know everything about the blockchain from the technical standpoint, coding, solidity, things like that. Um, and when the PFP and the, the art scene started taking off, I just saw this was a thought this was a perfect opportunity to mm -hmm. take everything I learned and dive in. Um, that's that's kind of like the I've, it may be destined, right? Like just because I've always been on the edge of technology. Um, I was working with the HoloLens in 2015, um, you know, so like it's not that I'm an expert in these fields. This is I've been exposed to them with my career track. So I understand the beginnings of most of them, and okay. uh, it's fun to be able to bring everything together. I think there's a zeitgeist coming, honestly. That's yeah, super interesting. So if I have to sum it up about the artist collective, so you know you work with artists who are not so digital friendly. You help them, you train them in, uh, or you help them in getting their work to a digital aspect. And then you maybe also help them create NFTs and then market it, sell it. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, all technologies, uh, bringing them uh, into the new marketplaces, NFTs and the NFT marketplaces happened to be what was hot last year. Um, uh -huh. We we really are focused on the physical art, and it's not this all traditional artists. We also work okay. with modern artists to get their stuff in print. Like so, we go the other way as well. So. I'll work with a digital artist who's never had something printed and will work to get that to, you know, a digital state, right? So now you've got the physical, okay. you've got the digital, and then the NFT is the provenance, um, is the is the receipt of, of it. And what we can do with the NFT is that, you know, you can forever hold it into your wallet or whatever, and yeah. that just becomes a, it becomes something that 10 years from now, you could say, hey, um, you know, you supported me for all this time. Here's a new piece yeah. of artwork. Um, it doesn't have to be 10 years, but you know, you can, you, you always got that uh, recorded transaction. So you always know who owns everything. It's, it's a nice new, I think it's an addition and enhancement to the field of both technology and art. That's great. So what's next for the artist collective? What do you have in mind? Oh, like we have been like in stealth mode most of the year. Mm -hmm. We've We've worked with artists, we've worked with clients and, and companies to, you know, do all the things that we said they were doing, but we also have been watching and learning a lot and devising our own, uh, you know, what we would call it the AC platform. And we want to be known as integrators in the space of metaverse and new technologies. So uh, mm -hmm. we partnered with several different metaverse companies or virtual worlds bringing them into the web three space um also the other way around we're bringing artists into their spaces and stuff so what we're really focused on we pretend on a daily basis that we're five years in the future and okay. we plan for things that are 21 years in the future uh it's just a number that was chosen by victor it's a special number for him so uh you know when we when we blue sky things we're thinking about 21 years in the future like where are people going to be what are they going to be doing yeah, what's that and then the practical, you know, short term goals are always set by, you know, let's pretend we're actually living five years from now and let's see what that looks like and try to make that happen today. 
so for the artist for a new artist who's let's say in his or her 20s starting out somebody who wants to make big in this world what would you advise them to do how would you uh what would you ask them to be ask them that they should learn or how should they go about their careers yeah so it's uh it's a long trek right like there's there's yeah. artists that are in their late 60s and 70s that they're just not known you know they might have sold some pieces over their lifetime and stuff but uh don't get discouraged when somebody gets famous or makes a lot of you know makes a lot of noise in the art scene um it is a lot of hard work you know it's like somebody being a, a rock star or whatever like a very f very few people get famous as artists right yeah that's um, true that's true but you can make a career of it you can you can get paid to do it and what i what i look for in an artist is someone who's continuous he's curious they're curious and they and they're continuously improving on themselves or improving in an area um it's it's one thing to be really good at a certain graphic design or create something that's a, a novel item and people you know okay you blow up you you blow up because of one certain little item that you did but that's that's not long standing and the collectors that we work with are traditional collectors so they're looking for artists that they're investing in they're not looking for an artist oh i think that that picture's pretty um, a lot of people we work with are just private and they will come and they'll ask, well, what's about this artist? What are they doing? Where are they going? Um, you know, how are, how involved are they in their own careers and their own growth and their own path? Um, that's, that's, those are the kind of questions that happen behind the scenes that a lot of artists don't realize. And another, another foundation or another pillar of what we do is try to teach the artists, you know, biz, the business of art. You know, there's a whole it, it's it's an old industry as a matter of fact you can use it to kind of for, fortune tell what's going to happen in a lot of industries so we've seen in the nft industry um in art and pfps the rug pulls and and the scams and all that well yeah, the, yeah. Art, the, the art industry did that 500 years ago you know so like you you can kind of gauge where things are going based on the art industry um and then you can learn a lot about so where do you think for arts and NFTs, if you combine it, where do you think it's going next? We have seen a lot of scams. You've seen the prices go down. Yeah. Well, that aside, I think cryptocurrency and and this whole idea of getting rich off of things is, you know, that's that, that's kind of a separate thing to what I the real utility and value in blockchain and Web three in general is the permanence is the is the trustless system. Yeah. Um, what's next is how do we take the provenance that we collect and attach to this nft one how do we take that into the future making it more useful than just a data set right like now you're thinking about mm -hmm. applications that take that information and do things with it but we're also looking at how do we how do we bring the the 3d asset right into the future metaverse you know whatever whatever that becomes people already today they want their 3d pieces they want they want you know if if i own a, a statue or well we'll stick with art but if i own a painting i would love for that painting to be in my metaverse office right my virtual world um yeah. people can see it in my virtual world uh a lot of the sculptures a lot of the sculpting artists uh the people want you know they want it in their metaverse or in their virtual world so we are we are i think we've Cross the precipice, especially with once AI kicked in, because we've had all the tools, we've had everything sitting in front of our face, um, you know, with the with the three D and the virtual worlds, with the the programming, the cloud computing, the IoT, the big data, right? And then we've always had AI just kind of rumbling along in the background, and what was missing from AI was the feedback loop. And I learned this when I was working at Tulane, you know one of the main things is the training right it's it's everything is the training uh, of these of these ml models and then the reconfiguring of the other ai type models so you need feedback and in the universities and in the companies they get feedback but it might be from a thousand people if they're lucky you know or a thousand case studies if they're lucky what we've seen now it's gotten to a point where these companies um you know the the various 
AI generative tools, they're getting millions of people giving them feedback. Yeah. Because the way it works is you're asking the computer to guess what you want. It gives you a guess and you say yes or no. Well, that's cool and all, but you can feed that back into it to make your model better and better and better. So there's this concept of five nines where you get 99.999% accuracy, right? It's, 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 uh, it's extremely difficult to get to. Um, but we can see where AI could get there one day because that last, those last three nines are where it's, yeah. it's more, and more difficult, right? Um, Got to. Not to get too far off into the technology of it all, but the idea is that we, there is, we've crossed a precipice where all of these technologies can come together now, and I think we can really see some real, uh, you know, social change. Like technology will be much more a part of our lives and disappear more than actually wow. be in our faces. So, are you as an artist using this tool like Dali or Mid Journey or all of that, the Cosmos? Are, are, are you using that? Yeah, absolutely. Because I, yeah, because I, I, I started, uh, I used to do uh, on Procreate, then I uh, moved there, I, and I found them very useful for someone who do not know the details. It is like very useful. So how do you think it is going to take over number one for everyone in general? And number two is how it is going to tackle the entire creative industry. Like today we have legit people designing stuff how much it is going to impact them or how much it is going to replace them truly. Yeah, I, we talk about this almost daily now. Um, I think <clears throat> I think we'll see the same thing happen with all of these AI tools that we saw happen with digital art. Just digital art you could take as a prime example, yeah. but it will be accelerated 10 times, right? So it took digital art literally 20 years to be considered art, right? I mean, you, you took now we're selling it for millions of dollars just pixels i think okay. the ai will take five six years before it is the you know like it, it's on par with everything what it's outputting uh what it means for artists is that you're going to have to learn these tools right like there's going to be a flood of hobbyists a flood of people interested that may end up becoming experts in the field uh, but the artists that are here today that adapt and start learning these tools will be the leaders in the future because you can take what you God, know God. like those those tools are really 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 effective if you already have yeah. the knowledge like you know the mid journey the people who are creating i'm using that yeah they're creating these fantastic segments on on mid journey and stuff but it's because they're putting in camera angles they're putting in you know they're putting in all this traditional art you know compositions and things like that so uh, you know it's it's because of their knowledge that they're able to create such great things. And that's going to continue to be true. So if an artist wants to stay relevant or not relevant, but if they want to stay ahead of the pack or at the lead of the pack, then they need to at least be aware of the tools and kind of play with them. Got it. Got it. You know, I've been using it for a while and I find it not only fascinating, but also very addictive because <laughs> it makes me think of what if I put this word, what if I put this color, how would things change? And it's yes. highly addictive. But it's yeah, fun. That's, I think that's uh, the conundrum of the artist, right? Like when you're sitting there with a palette full of paint, you can make yeah. anything, and yeah, so it's it's all about it's all about the decision making process, and that's how you read artwork, right? Is why did yeah, they yeah. put why did they make it blue? Why did they put it over here, right? There's no accidents yeah. in an art piece, a, a yeah. proper one. So on yeah, on that, uh, I'm curious about your profile picture. That looks really cool. What's the story behind that? My current one, this is an AI generated yeah. one. Yeah, uh, the, the, on the LinkedIn, the one on the LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm using the AI tools to create my own world. Of uh, I've got a, a world inside my oh. head, a story that I've had in my head for a long time. Um, it's gonna be the theme of our virtual worlds that we're creating right now. Uh, for the oh, arts wow. collective. But there's a story. Wow. There's a, you know, there's. I'm going to I'm going to release the story as a graphic novel and then the oh. world is a, is a larger codex of information but it's like a long term I would like to learn more because I am also doing something similar I am using mid journey to create the world not only the world but also characters but I would love to hear the story more uh, how are you building the world and what are you doing in that space Well it's a because the space is moving so fast 
it's a lot of conceptualization right now. I mean, that's okay. just there. There's not. Um, I'm I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my art, you know. Or you know, I like to I like to make sure that things are the way that I want them. I don't want to put stuff out there. So I'll I'll start going through the visually creating some visual ideas and things like that. And then I'll spend all day telling stories in my head while I'm doing other work. And and what I'm learning now is be you know how to compose a shot directly um, i'm into stable diffusion i use google collab i also run it locally um i'm i'm using the the new tools that are doing the the image to image video um so i'm, I'm moving into the spaces where i see this multimedia experience that i can tell the story with, not just a graphic novel or not just a a, a, a written novel or something but i think that within six months or so, I could create a multimedia web experience that would tell my story. Um, exactly. You know, it's more of a, it's more of a on passion the, project. On that point, uh, where, where do you see, like, uh, uh, move, today we go to a theater, we watch a movie, and today now you can watch in an IMAX or 3D. When do you think that experience is going to come into full immersive 360 format for a big movie like an Avatar or a Marvel movie or a Batman? What do you think? What is the roadmap for? Because I heard studios have started working on all of this. But what yeah. do you think? Where, where, when can we see something like that? Where we're truly inside a world someone yeah. created. I don't think it'll be too long. I don't think, you know, we're, we're already seeing that kind of stuff pop up at the at Disney World, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it will still be those places that provide those experiences. I don't think that you will for a long time at least you won't sit in your living room and have one of those mat those really high quality experiences you might have some ar overlays you might have some things that are pretty cool but it will always be the studios that create you know stuff professionally that's going to create the wow factors um you know that maybe i think that it's kind of like the web right like we still have newspapers we still have telephones yeah. we still have now we have the web i think in the future then we'll have the 3d worlds and then we'll have the experience you know we'll have three places that you go that you go for the full experience instead of a movie theater or you know probably will be the movie theater studios that provide them first but i do yeah i think that there's within 10 years you'll start to see like the immersive full storytelling uh, you know, the AI is, I think, like I said, is is what's pushed us over the edge because exactly. creators can do it like that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds fascinating, but it also sounds like an episode from this series, The Black Mirror. Yeah, can yeah. Be... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, I think it's we will. I think we've already lost. You know, if you want to call it a win lose, I think that we've already you know lost the battle. Like we technology will be integrated with us physically uh it's you know an ai yeah. will be part of our lives yeah. from here on out there's just i think that the sooner people just accept that and like work towards making it the best possible way then the better off we'll be because there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of arguing going on right now that's just it, it's too I late think, <laughs> i we think i read it. some news read some news recently elon musk is going to test those neural chips in six months with humans. Oh yeah. I, I imagine that it won't be it won't be a year before we'll see somebody doing it without a chip. Right? Oh, okay. I mean, why not, right? Like you got invasive. I'm sure that they could figure out a way to do it non invasive. It might be impossible, but who knows? I'd rather wear a hat than put a chip <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that sounds cool. But uh yeah I I envision shortly we'll see more of a cyberpunk type feeling because what I do imagine is these, have you seen the holograms, the new really good yeah. hologram boxes, you know, Tupac yeah. was in one and they're doing interviews and stuff. I think they're going to become very thin and flat and be on this, be the size of buildings. So now okay. we'll get those holograms that we saw in Blade Runner, but it'll be more of taking that technology that they already have, making it thin and flat, right? Um, so I think that that's coming sooner than people expect. I think everything's coming sooner than people expect because we we just simply can't keep up with it now. It's, that's true. It, that's true. I, I feel so, like I'm at the forefront of stuff, and every day I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think I recently discovered Mid Journey like four or five weeks, and I I was blown away because 
all the tool i was using was good but mid journey is at a different level given the detailing given the scope i was like nothing can beat this now yeah yeah and and what's coming next is you having the ability to just whip up your own model so that's what i've been yeah. investigating now is creating my own model so that i can call up me so I'm, you know i have me and and victor and whoever else i can make a model of you or any character and then in, in the prompt i say uh ken in you know uh, superhero ken saving the day with victor doing so and so um and then on top of that you could train like outfits you could train a th yeah. anything so you could yeah, say that he's wearing true. so and so um right now i'm working with somebody that we're creating this we're creating her as a model but then we're also creating her dresses as ai models as well so now we can say she's wearing this dress in this environment and instead of going through the 3d process and all that other stuff it's just it's just there right like it just creates it um it's mm. yeah i think that we're just playing catch up at this point you know got it yeah that's true yeah so switching gears for the artist collective uh, is there something that you would want from the community or certain kind of helps or projects or certain skill sets that you'd like to hire for or that you're looking for? We, well, we're wide open. I mean, the market itself is it's quickly turning over to the, the 3D modelers. Right. And, the, mm -hmm. and we've seen it. We've seen a shift. The, the web three people, the contracting, the smart contracting, that's still there. They're still expensive. It's still a thing. It's never going to mm -hmm. go away. Um, but we're seeing a, a lot, like if you're a 3d modeler, you, you're going to have a job. If you, uh, you know, if you are taking on this new AI stuff and can produce polished final works, then you're going to have a job too. Um, the artist collective, we, we are focused on providing a platform for the artists that come into the collective and the collectors that are part of our network. Um, you know, asking something directly is just, uh, you know, there's not, there's nothing really from the community. They're producing great art. They're being engaged. Mm -hmm. um, we're just, we're at a point now where we've spent a lot of time building behind the scenes. And over the next couple of months, you'll see a lot of yeah. actual virtual spaces come alive um more online store stuff going on uh, we've we've switched from riding the nft and the cryptocurrency to now we're moving into we actually are providing a seven day money back guarantee uh you know that's unheard of in web3 and yeah. we're also you know we're we're moving towards what we can do to stabilize things uh art should be if i buy it for 250 dollars, it should be worth 250 dollars when i go to sell it so we're we've stopped using ethereum and other cryptocurrencies we go straight with you know stable usd or usdc uh mm -hmm. we're, you know, that's what we're focused on now is creating the platform that is forward thinking future thinking and is stable for for the artists and the collectors that's that's absolutely great to hear. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. In in uh, I have a follow up on Metaverse. Like, uh, what do you think uh, is truly going to be? Like, is Facebook going to dominate the space? Is uh, someone like a sandbox or Decentraland or Roblox or Fortnite? There are so many player playing in niche uh, segments. Is there going to be a true decentralized world, or there would be like different world? We will go in and out of them as for our convenience with what we do today. Comparing oh, yeah. them to a YouTube, Instagram, or something like that. Decentralized. We already have some decentralized systems. Is is it decentralized of power and access, or is it decentralized of the actual technologies? Right. So, you know, there we have companies that are working together that you can bring your game assets from one game to another. It's just not yeah. blockchain, or it might be blockchain. They don't call it blockchain, right? Um, there's. It's going to. No matter what, it's going to take a conglomerate of corporations agreeing on a standard or a means of them transferring data between each other uh, it's not going to be a social movement that actually fixes it or makes it happen it's going to be by companies working together by governments working together um you know it's it's in the reason that the, the elephant in the room is the legalities of things right because we're talking about international okay. ip inter, you know intellectual property so 
ultimately and this is is what all the artists come down to as well well what if they steal my stuff well you got to go through the law through the legal system you know it's just there's blockchain doesn't fix that you know it might be used as evidence as something happened but it doesn't fix anything um that's that's why we're trying to figure out ways to use the nft that is more you know relevant to what's the legal standing so you know our nft is not going to have a trade of blue hair our nft is going to have a trade of well you can go to this office and and bring up the the legal papers for the provenance of this art piece at this at this place or you can arbitrage in these countries legally right um making it more about the data more more useful got it i have a question which is slightly different uh if there is an artist or creator who want to get started and this person is a creative person but they want to get started to explore this field what would be your advice to them or how they can navigate this world they're just getting started the it's such a like it's such a big world we haven't even decided what web3 stands for yet you know i mean there's basically if it's a blockchain enabled applications right um in that case learn solidity there's just hands down like if you want if you want to be aware of what web3 is do whatever you can do to figure out you know what it's about and what how it works um because ultimately that's what it's all about i can go to a smart contract online read it understand what it's doing and and see where things are wrong or where things are right um that's the whole point of the system that's all the ultimate goal should be to at least understand at a, at a deep level what solidity is or what the you know how to how these things work um from the metaverse side it's such a creative space right now uh, on one hand if you can bring you know your artistic talents into the 3d realm uh that that's definitely something you should look at and then from the data side right what's deeply what's what's missing from both web3 and and the metaverse is the traditional application data products uh you know uh, delivery all of that stuff that we've learned and made efficient over 40 years of software development there's a there's a huge gap in both you know the new metaverse worlds and web3 so i i don't think that yeah. people should think only in terms of art or in creators, okay. you know, that kind of creators, there's a lot of, there's a lot of room for traditional product managers, as you, as you know, right? Got it, got it. Great. So for all our artists out there who want to do something cool in the Web3 world, I would recommend to reach Ken or somebody in the artist collective and work with them to have a very fascinating career ahead by the way thank you so much ken for your time and love the thank podcast you. it was very interesting very deep and uh, hopefully we can have you back for another one in sometime in the future absolutely thanks thanks a lot thanks a lot for uh, it was great talking to you